guys. We're going to talk a little bit today on tractor logging. Uh, something that I've been involved with for probably 25 years at least. Just going to swing the camera around here and let you take a look at my rig. I'm using a Fransgard V4000 winch, a Kubota M8200. It's about 85 horsepower. Good tractor, good uh, clearance from the ground. Lots of power for pulling. I'm going to show you here what I'm using for chokers. What I've got here is, uh, I believe this is a 5 16 70 grade chain. I put a 3 8 clevis on the end of it for the chain to feed through. On the other end, I go up to the blacksmith shop. I take a piece of rod, bend it like this here, uh, hit this one with the arc welder, I guess. I've got some here that are forge welded. This is just, uh, all this does is aid in getting the chain underneath the log, especially if there's a lot of uh, litter on the forest floor or you're in snow. Uh, when I do these up in the forge, I don't temper these. I want them to bend, twist, kink, whatever they want to do. If you temper these hard, uh, when you build up a big jag of logs and you get uh, these get down in between the logs, especially in the winter time when the frost is in the steel, these will snap if they're tempered hard. So I just leave them untempered so that they can bend wherever they want. I can soon take them up on the anvil and straighten the kinks out of them. Uh, most of these chains I've got here are six foot. I believe I've got a couple of eight foot here for uh, for bigger lumber. I've also got. Uh, Got a couple here that are that are three eighths chain, seventy grade once again. Seventy grade is the only thing I find stands up to to yarding. I've had uh, the lighter chains that came with the winch. I've broke them in so many pieces I can't even find them anymore. Another thing I carry on the winch is a couple of these. That's about 18 inches of 70 grade chain with a grab hook on the end. Every now and then you get a you get a big log pulled up to the winch. Choker, even with a 10 or an 8 foot choker, uh, sometimes the diameter of the logs are big enough that you just need that extra foot or so to to get hooked up to the winch. These serve the purpose. This is something else that I would not be without in the woods. Snatch block, it's an open top. I bought this at an estate sale of an old blacksmith shop. This is a wonderful piece of equipment if you want to get logs or uh, firewood, whatever, out from behind smaller crop trees without damaging the tree. You put this on, I carry, uh, I carry just one of these nylon straps throw this around a tree and uh, it works wonders to clear clear your logs around stumps or like I say uh, crop trees you don't want to damage get stuff out of uh, tight corners we're gonna do a little demonstration with some of this here stuff here after a bit that's what we carry for gear on the tractor the other thing that I can't be without in the woods is one of these if you don't have one of these, stay home. <laughs> okay, the next thing we want to show you here, right here we've got a nice maple. It's a red maple, and I've tipped it into this spruce to demonstrate to you how you can roll a tree with your chokers. Now, my tractor is sitting right over there. So a direct line of pull, I would have to have my clevis coming off here to pull straight to the tractor. But what I've got is the clevis around here on the side of the tree. Now as the choker pulls, 
the line of pull is going to be in this direction. So what that's going to do is rotate that tree to the left and it's going to roll it out of that spruce top and down into that opening behind us. So we're going to power the winch up here. We're going to give this a pull and demonstrate what happens. Okay, hopefully we're not going to get too much noise from the tractor and winch here, but we're going to see that tree rotate to the left when the winch pressure comes on it. And there we have it. We're able to turn that tree away from the obstruction of that spruce top, rolled it off the stump, I brought the tree down easily. Now if I had it just pulled straight on the tree by hooking the choker directly in line for the winch, it would have pulled back, would have had to come back almost the full length of the tree before the top come down out of that spruce. Instead we were able to roll it over into that opening, drop it on the ground without an issue. Okay, here's another little tip. When you bring your logs up to your winch, there's the back plate of our winch. When you bring them up, you don't want to hook your choker tight. Leave a little bit of play in it like this here. See, I've got, a, I've got probably a foot of slack in the choker from where it's on the log up to the back plate, the notch in the back plate. The reason for that is, if you hook this chain up tight, like this, then when you elevate the winch to drive the tractor, that will pull the log right in against your butt plate, the back of your winch, and it creates a situation where your log is almost solidly attached to your winch. It's, uh, it doesn't have the freedom to uh, sway back and forth to follow behind your tractor. Instead, it creates uh, an almost solid tail behind your winch. I've seen, well, these, uh, these logs I have here, one's a 16 foot, the other one's probably 24, 26 feet. I've seen 12 foot logs that might happen to get fastened up a little too tightly at the, the back of the winch here. I've seen them stand straight in the air behind the winch. They catch a little bit of a stump or, uh, or uh, you know, some obstruction of rock in the trail, whatever. It's not a situation you want to happen. So you want to keep some play on those chokers. It gives that log a chance to bounce around and kind of free float over stumps, rocks, humps in the trail. Just another tip that'll, uh, that'll keep you safe. It also makes it so when you set your winch down, those logs aren't up underneath your winch. They're still going to be back behind you. Okay, so our next point, if you see the rotation of that shaft, now I know I don't have a shield on that, I slap my fingers for it, but the rotation of that shaft is turning in this direction. If you look at the reach control, you see a lever here. The lever here pushes up to activate the winch. Sorry for the poor pin right there. That lever is also pulled by a rope on this side. If you pull this rope, see this pulley down here. The rope is passing up there to pull that lever in. There's a reason. That's good really got to operate from this side. Sometimes under mold, I've seen this shaft snap the u joint. And the one time that it happened to me, that uh, PTO shaft, the top section of the shaft here, flew off, hit the arm on the tractor there, 
bounced off the tire and went about 20 feet down through the woods into the snow. I tried to try and find him. Point is, if I hadn't been on this side using a rope to activate the winch, I would have been standing on that side pushing the lever. I would have, uh, I would have got a pretty solid crack in the leg, maybe some serious damage. But when that shaft came off there under load, that came off there pretty fast. So the safe point to operate this winch, as you can see, there's uh, the a nice handle comes with these, your pads in. The safe place to operate this winch is from over here on the left side, when you're looking at the back of the tractor. Left side, pull it in. And we get wood coming to the truck. The rope enables me to stay back over the way. My boots. The log is well over there. I'm back there with the tractor. I'm out of the way of any obstructions, any uh, limbs that are springing from the tractor, or from the log, rather. It's the safer place to be. Okay, the next part we're going to talk about here is using the snatch block. Uh, got a maple tree here. Got a pretty twisty butt onto it, so I'm going to weed the tree out. It's not that large. Normally I'd leave a smaller tree like this growing. But this one is pretty twisty on the butt. So once again, I've got my choker hook. It's going to roll the tree in this direction. The tree is up in the top of that other maple. Now, the reason I'm going to use the snatch block is my tractor is right there. So, to get that tree down out of that top, pulling from right there, isn't going to work for me. So what I've done, you can follow the line here, going right back through here, I've hooked the snatch block, Down in around the base of this small yellow birch here. And the line is going to the tractor from here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to tighten up that line. That'll pull past these other two trees here. Pull back this way enough to allow that tree to drop. Then I'll, uh, I'll junk it in the middle and take it straight to the tractor. That way there. It's going to make life a lot easier. Okay, so once again we're out here to the tractor. I'm going to pick up some noise here from the motor. There's the tree that we're pulling over. The snatch block is right back in there. We're going to tighten up the line here. Pull her down. Just like that, we were able to take this tree from the stump here, take the butt back there about 16 feet to where the uh, snatch block is on the uh, yellow birch tree. We pulled down out of that maple, not much damage to the maple, we got one broken limb up there. Now we can cut in the middle and take it out to the tractor. Okay, here's another little tip for uh, what I've got here. I've got uh, a maple trunk about 18, 20 feet long. I've also got this piece of yellow birch here. Yellow birch is probably uh, oh, 10, 12 feet long. Not really big enough to justify its own choker. So what I've got 
I take the choker, this is the clevis on the end, I go around the yellow birch, come back this way, go around the maple, back up on this side, and pass through the clevis. So what I've done effectively is put a figure eight around the two trees. Now as the chain tightens, it's going to tighten in equally on each piece. The fold is central. When we get to the road, this will be snugged right up good and tight. Two logs and one choker, a figure eight hitch.